Thank you for tuning in to Growing Tech Fast, the condensed podcast in which conversations about growing SaaS startups are had with those who have grown them. Uh, I'm delighted today to be joined by Kyle Bernhardy, our guest. Thank you for being here, Kyle. Yeah, thank you. I was really looking forward to our conversation. Brilliant. Me too. Um, so yeah, I mean, briefly, so Kyle is the CTO and co-founder of HarperDB. Uh, he's got 20 years experience across what looks like a pretty broad range of roles in the tech space, um, an expert in cloud architectures, multiple programming languages. And Kyle is also the co-inventor of two patents with his team, Stephen and Zach. So excited to hear about all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, just, just to give people a little bit more uh, of an in-depth uh, intro and understanding, could you tell us just a little bit about the work uh, that you guys and the team have been doing at HarperDB, Kyle. Sure, yeah. So um, high-level view of HarperDB uh, from a business side, um, it's a distributed database that you can install really anywhere. You can install it in the cloud. We have a managed service um, that you can do one-click deployment um, you know, through our studio, um, but you can also install it on bare metal. You can install it in containers uh, on the edge, you know, on, you could, we've installed it and run it on micro devices like Raspberry Pis, yeah. Um, yeah. things like that. So, you know, you can create this distributed mesh of data very close to the people that need it. The other key thing too, is we released a feature this past fall called custom functions. So not just bringing your data close to your uh, users or, you know, endpoints, mm -hmm. You can also bring your application logic that runs with HarperDB in line. So you can wrap your logic with the data resident to your APIs. And so really bringing everything very close to the uh, end users that need it. Uh, also about collapsing the stack and making things very simple. That's really the key uh, like value prop of our organization is simplicity. And make it, you know, while databases and all these things are very complicated, we try to internalize these things as much as possible to make it very easy for developers and implementers to get up off the ground, create, you know, their simple data, you know, very simple to create your data model up front, create your API endpoints and just, you know, create the logic that you need with your data so that you can build the applications that are going to power your solutions. Awesome. So, so very cool product, Kyle. And when, when was it that, that you kind of realized that, that we needed a product like that? Could you talk us a little bit through the kind of inception of maybe the idea where, where you guys were at and, and, and how that came about really? Yeah, absolutely. So um, my co-founders and I, um, we've been working together for about 10 years over a number of different startups. HarperDB is the first one that we have run ourselves. Um, but the startup before this was a big data analytics a uh, company focused on sports and entertainment. Uh, we had done things like you know, aggregating all the tweets for the World Cup years ago. Uh, and the peak volume for that was around 250,000 tweets per second. We were doing natural language processing and all these other things on it. Uh, and really then just creating near real time uh, visualizations based off of what was happening for the game. Uh, we were doing branded uh, advertising for you know, games, and it was for every game throughout the World Cup. Um, and so that, that really required a very complex uh, data architecture. Uh, at first, we were just running on a, you know, an RDBMS, but uh, relational databases don't do well for individual transaction loads. Um, and so we were just watching our database crash and crash and crash. <laughs> so then we uh, implemented a NoSQL database in front of that. Um, just to act as an umbrella to catch everything so that we could in bulk near real time, then offload those transactions into the relational database to do further analytics. Um, we're big Amazon partners. Amazon at the time didn't have anything that could act as a pipeline between the two databases. So we had to build our own custom integration to do what we actually needed it to do. And we had some other things that we were implementing from a data architecture perspective. Um, we were a startup and we were spending about 10 to $20,000 a month alone just on our infrastructure costs on our database um, and that pipeline and all those things. It was very complicated. We thought we were stupid. We talked to Amazon, we talked to Twitter, we talked to all these different large partners who told us we were doing absolutely the right thing. 
Um, this is, they're like, this is how you do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and so, um, <clears throat> sorry, I have a few allergies. Here. <laughs> it's getting pollen in, in uh, Colorado. Um, so we, um, just thought this was crazy that this is the state of the, um, the industry, as far as databases go, where you had to have this like fragmentation just to do what we needed to do. And so we ideated on, well, we were just so frustrated one night and we were just sort of kicking around, like, what would we want to see better? And so we came up with sort of, you know, chocolate and the peanut butter. It's like, well, we love NoSQL databases. They're very flexible, very scalable, can handle high throughput. Um, and we also love SQL. Uh, like the analytic capabilities of SQL. Um, at the time, this was about seven years ago, like there really weren't a lot of products that were offering something like that. Um, and so uh, we you know, came up with some ideas around just very high level spitball, um, but we were also like, well, we're power users and like high-end users of databases. We are not database creators. And so we figured someone else, this is a, our problem. Someone else would have this problem. Someone else will do this. But the idea stuck with us and we would kick it around and talk about it. Um, you know, just in our off time, we're having a beer um, and just it stuck with us and we never saw anything in the industry moving around that. So, um, you know, after, you know, about, <clears throat> excuse me, 18 months, we just realized um, there's something to this idea and we, <clears throat> I am sorry. And we want to pursue <laughs> there, this. Yeah. Of course, when I have to talk, <laughs> <laughs> if you need to get water at any point, just let us know. Uh, I got worry. some water. Right <laughs> Perfect. Um, uh, appreciate that. Um, so, you know, Steven, uh, my co-founder and our CEO, he got us about three to four months of seed funding. Mm. Uh, and we started Harper DB five years ago this past March. Um, and, you know, we spent a lot of time just sort of formulating the bones of the company, not just the product itself. You know, the distributed nature of Harper DB, that because our initial goal was to create, you know, like um, a database that you know can like do scale on the NoSQL layer with a single data underlying data store, not doing multi-model where you've got two different databases under the hood and doing this complicated synchronization under the hood. Single model, we create this unique data model um, to us. We create a net new database from the ground up, which is kind of crazy five years down the road, but we did it. Um, <laughs> um, the distributed nature, <clears throat> really was uh, came out of um, decisions that we made in order to do replication. And it was sort of like that came along with decisions that we made. And the industry has evolved, uh, like the broader IT industry has evolved to the point where like what we fulfill, uh, like our product fulfills like a really big need where there's been a lot of centralization in cloud and um, People's needs are so much more diverse now. So like in gaming, people game all over the world. And so if you're centralized in just a few data centers um, from your database perspective, um, maybe you can't reach people down in Buenos Aires, right? Maybe that the, where you decided to put your um, data actually creates huge bottlenecks and a lot of latency and <clears throat> limits you from being able to really fulfill customer needs in certain geos where there's actually like high demand, but you can't actually fulfill the need. And so bringing the data again down close to where um, your users are and then distributing that globally now start solving that problem. Um, and also, you know, we play nicely with other databases. You can do data synchronizations, you know, through HarperDB. So it's not, doesn't just have to be the single, you know, source of truth, but it can also act as can be a source of truth, can also act as like a, like a caching layer too. So something more traditional, um, like what people use with Redis, but more in line with like being able to do SQL and traditional NoSQL, a little bit more structured things like that with the application layer that I had talked about before. 
So that ended up being based off design decisions and where the IT, uh, you know, IT has moved and needs have moved with customers. We sort of just aligned very nicely. Um, but for a while, where we kind of played was a little bit ahead of the curve. We were pursuing IoT for a little bit, but IoT has been very nascent as far as you know, real products or uh, projects, um, just from our experience from a sales, <clears throat> excuse me, sales cycle. Okay, awesome, awesome. No, that's um, that's really cool, and it's great to see how the the product and the initial initial kind of idea have evolved as you went on there. Um, and in the, in those kind of early days, what do you think some of the um, some of the main challenges were in that really kind of initially get, getting that company set up there? And I guess how, how did you deal from that? How did you deal with that? You know, what what were the lessons learned there? Yeah, um, <clears throat> from a technological perspective, you know, we had so when I said we build a database from the ground up, we even like our data store. We built that from the ground up. <clears throat> I apologize. Um, <laughs> Don't worry, Kyle. It, it, um, it was gonna be. It was gonna be the day you had the podcast, wasn't it? That it would. Fly yeah, <laughs> I know. I got a frog in my throat. <clears> throat> um. Anyway. Um. Uh. So we had were building all this from the ground up. Um. And so very early on, we built this data structure based on the file system very early on. Um. And while it did prove out. Um the vision of our product, the actual underlying data store did not meet needs of scale and performance. And so that was like a huge um, challenge that we were, you know, early days constantly trying to like triage and figure out how can we make this better? How can we make this better? But eventually you just start, you know, you're pushing on a door and you realize it's a wall um, that just has a door painted on it. <laughs> Um, and so that was a really hard time just from a technological perspective of like, what do we do while like our product and the product vision was correct. It was this like core underpinning was incorrect. And so we had some very hard conversations. We also had tried some things with a, a technological partner that didn't work out, um, that created loss of money. Um, also was really disheartening for our team and also that partner's team um, just because it didn't work out. But we learned through this experimenting. So it's sort of that like try, fail, try, succeed more uh, paradigm um, where we were trying, this didn't work out, but we learned a lot through the, the pattern and through working with this partner while that didn't work out. One of the things we identified is well, this doesn't work, which actually helps us identify what will work. Because there were elements of working with their product, which is a key value store that really had really strong bones to it. It just didn't align with our product. Their product was great, just didn't align with ours. And so we learned we needed like an inline key value store that did not run as a separate server. You know, we needed a, a flexible data model you know, just all these different things that we learned that then I could go and start doing R&D on any product out there. Um, and I just started eliminating, eliminating, eliminating until I landed on the right underpinning that we could then build upon. Um, so that was a huge challenge for us. You know, we've had challenges <clears throat> around staffing and the, the staffing was not so much around um, bad people. It's more about uh, understanding our identity and who we are and what do we value? Um, how do we operate? And then once we're really clear on those uh, elements and really embodying those elements, it helps us find people that also, you know, feel the same way, think the same mm -hmm. way, operate similar. I don't want people that are all in the same box but it's like having this shared vision that then people bring their own expertise to and challenge me. Cause that's part of like one of our key values is around like transparency and authenticity. So if you bring both of those things and they're really fostered, people then feel empowered to, you know, say, Hey, I see where we're going. However, what we're doing here, what if we tried something else? And so the key part of that, as well as being able to have, you know, constructive conversations. So challenging conversations in a constructive way, you know, finding people and also guiding people, people guiding me 
to be able to deal with conflict in healthy ways rather than just, you know, getting scared if things are challenging or getting big if things are challenging, but, you know, being like, okay, this is a challenging moment. And we're also all in this together. We're trying to accomplish this together. And so those have been, uh, I think, you know, the technology is challenging, but just sort of my own personal journey and Mm -hmm. like learning how to kind of calm down and and really listen to people. (laughs) That's been as big of it as anything. Because when we started this company, um, yeah, I was CTO, uh, but I was not really ready to be CTO. Um, but it's sort of like you show up and you, you know, you try <laughs> and, you know, again, it's sort of like the technology you try, this didn't work. What did I learn from this? What was the opportunity in this? How can I adjust? Try again. <laughs> You know, and that's ever changing, right? Like I'm still in that position. We're in a growth phase right now. I will face new challenges uh, that are both like equally exciting and scary at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. And do you think that in, in terms of your kind of personal development, were there any kind of key moments where you kind of saw a change and, and had to adapt there, or, or or has that been more of a more of a continual thing? Do you think, that, Kyle? Um, I, I think it's been continual. You know, one of the key things that, you know, these last two years, especially have been really hard for everybody. Mm. Um, you know, we've all been away from each other. Like there's been, you know, everyone has been facing their own like personal challenges outside of, you, you know, that like sort of globally, we're all confronting together, but like, we're all doing it essentially kind of alone. Like, you know, if we're fortunate, we have you know, uh, partners that can support us, but, you know, it's still like, we're kind of alone and that creates a pressure cooker. And then working for a startup and trying to get something off the ground adds its own pressure. And like, I have really pushed myself very hard over these last five years, just trying to do as much as I personally can. Uh, and that has caused uh, near burnout over times. And like yeah. this past yeah. fall, um, you know, my business partners and I like met for lunch and they were like, are you okay? <laughs> uh, and it's this realization of like, take a breath, slow down. This is a marathon, not a sprint. This isn't, you know, like for me, one of the big things is like, I, you know, best intentions trying to do everything I can to, you know, support the business and, and make this successful. But, you know, there's a balance to be faced and not doing it this expense of yourself right and so that was one of the big things I've really had to navigate because you know I'm uh I'll be 50 in a couple years I don't have the same amount of energy I did 10 years ago uh and I used to be able to just like push myself for a really long time but now also I'm not just an individual individual contributor you know I have a team that you know, relies on me. I have business partners and I also need to support these people. And if I'm not in a good place, I can't show up and support them. And that creates real gap because, you know, from an organizational perspective, like how I view myself is more of a guide and really, you know, sort of leading from the middle um, and, you know, working with, obviously I need to make decisions. Like, I'm not just being like, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? But it's also getting feedback, taking feedback, really explaining <clears throat> what it is we're doing. Why are we doing these things? So people, you know, understand where we're going rather than just saying yes, no. Uh, but really, you know, creating understanding in the organization. But if I'm burnt out, I can't do any of that because I don't have capacity. So that was one of the really, and that was this past fall mm. is really just like, how do I do this effectively and like, and still perform, but not to the expense of like, I'm just completely blown out. Um, so part of that is like, is like just asking for help. And like, you know, like I, when I get stressed, I tend to internalize. And so also like recognizing, Hey, I'm getting stressed and then share that with other members of my team so that they can hear me and be like, okay, how can I help you? Um, you know, so really learning to rely more on the other members of my team. And, and then like by doing that now, I also recognize that in other 
people on my team too, right? Like I can see when they're getting overextended and like just show up and be like, hey, I see you have a lot on your plate. What can I do to help you here? Um, and whether that's a junior engineer, you know, my uh, director of engineering, uh, you know, marketing side, like how, what in marketing, I'm not a marketing expert, but is there something I can do to help, <laughs> to help and make, make things easier? So, you know, that was one of the big things is just mm. learning how to take a breath and just recognize this is for the long haul. This isn't, we're not doing this for three months. We're doing this for years. Yeah, of course, of course. No, and I think that's, yeah, something a, a lot of people, especially in the startup world, will will be able to relate to. Obviously, that's one of the kind of um, one of the challenges. But in terms of some of the uh, some of the highlights, what have been some of the I guess some of the some of the best moments with uh, with Harper DB? What what are some of the best memories there with you guys? Well, you know, one of my best memories is the first day, like so, March first, twenty seventeen. Uh, where, you know, myself and Steven and Fred and Zach and uh, Kaylin, who was with us at the time, um, we, that was just the five of us, that was the starting group of the company. And we all showed up at our co-working space together with our laptops. Uh, and we're like, we're doing this, you know, that it just like that, you know, and feeling of like, um, the potentiality and being really proud of us and just seeing this, this team that works so well together and just, you know, and we have this idea, we're going to make this idea a thing. Um, and it just, the excitement of that, that was just a really highlight, big highlight for us. Um, we just closed our first major deal, uh, last Thursday, we just signed the sales order, uh, on both sides, uh, that, is so exciting um yeah. just the potential of you know this huge deal that we have this huge company that wants to do business with us believes in our product believes in our team sees how this can bring value to them and to their customers um it's super exciting <laughs> um you know um i think you know just seeing um <clears throat> I don't know. There's like a lot of days where we do a daily stand up with our engineering team uh, almost every day. I love that. I mean, those are small things. You know, I obviously listed two big milestones, but, um, you know, I, I really love our team. And whenever, you know, there's most days like we're on, I'm just like, this is such a great team. Really love these these people. <laughs> um, it's small things, but, you know, and then just seeing. Uh, you know, um, you know, people on the engineering side, just over the, the years, how they've grown and, you know, how they, so it's not just my development, it's also their development. And just, you know, there's times where, you know, so my lead engineer, uh, David, um, this past fall, uh, I had just said to him, I was like, Hey, let's refactor this element of our product. <clears throat> and I was like, I would like you to architect this. And he's like, awesome. Great. Uh, and like, you know, <clears throat> he and I talked together, you know, just shared the vision with him, but he took it, ran with it, you know, architected it, you know, showed to me like, a what, you know, a toy of what he was thinking of, uh, it was like on point and just like seeing that and that growth from when I first hired him three years ago to like this person that can just take minimal requirements and just run with it. And it's also in line with our product vision is like just amazing. Um, just seeing everyone growing. Uh, and especially again, like during these last two years, we haven't been together, but we've still been able to effectively communicate and stay connected uh, remotely is really great. Um, one other thing, I know I'm saying a lot of things. No, we no, also, it's good to hear all the good things. <laughs> these are the one things one of about. the really fantastic things was, um, uh, so just to celebrate that deal that we had closed, we, um, everyone that was here in Denver, we all got together, um, to have some drinks and just to, you know, be together, um, and celebrate. And the super cool thing was how many kids were there and just seeing like, wow, like I knew this, but you know, we haven't all been together and hadn't really all been together, like with our families and just seeing all that we also just felt like, um, you know, the vibrancy of all that is really exciting. Love and the that. fact that people, you know, feel comfortable, feel safe, 
you know, that our company fosters um, not just work, but your life. And that's really important. Brilliant, brilliant. No, that's that's awesome to hear. Um, so yeah, I'm c- conscious we're coming up to uh, coming up to time, Kyle. But I've been wanting to ask this question. I think it's always a good good finisher. So, what would you say are some of the some of the best piece of advice or one best bit of advice you've you've been given in your career? Do you think? Um, yeah, a couple of things. So I have a, a really good friend of mine. Um, is you don't have to be a serious person to do serious things. Uh, I love that one. Um, I try to remind that because sometimes I get so like like just like in my head and like uh, and so I try to think of that and like what that reminds me is like you know things happen um I can't I have no control over what occurs but I do have control over how I respond um and so do I need to be grumpy (laughs) or could I do something else um and you know just circling back to what I had said earlier is just it's a marathon not a sprint right yeah. And yeah. that could be for just about anything, uh, not just startup, you know, you know, if you're, you know, a business owner or working in a startup or just whatever it is you're doing, just, I think getting some perspective that, you know, mo- a lot of the things we do are for the long haul. And so how do you, you know, accomplish tasks while also making sure that, you know, you are, you know, resourced enough to take care of yourself, the people around you, um, you know, cause whatever it is we're doing in life, it's not just you, right. You, you have a family, you have friends, you have coworkers. So, um, I think those are the two key things that I've heard over the last few years that have really resonated with me. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Um, well, yeah, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us today, Kyle. It's been, uh, it's been really great to chat, learn all about, uh, about your guys' story. Um, so for, for anything, uh, I, I mean, uh, for when people want to find out a little bit more, um, I believe they can find you at harperdb.io. Is there anywhere else people should be going? Um, harperdb.io is a great place. You know, we have, we're around on all the socials that you can find on the bottom of our uh, homepage. Um, that's a great place to learn more about us, get resources. You can learn more about our team, you know, through that site and, you know, links out to all of us. And that's a great hub, uh, to start. Yeah. But George, this was great. I really enjoyed talking to you and, uh, your audience. Thank you so much. Awesome. Well, thank you for, uh, thank you for joining Kyle and thank you for watching.